Reverend Danjuma Biang, a member of delegation of the Northern Pentecostal Bishops that met with All Progressives Congress APC presidential candidate Bola Ahmed Sinumbu a couple of months back, has regretted being part of the gathering. The guardian gathered that the cleric posted the remorse in a WhatsApp group, Bond Truth, where he explained what transpired at the meeting. The bishops had been accused of receiving millions in Naira as transport money and branded souvenirs. Contacted Biang, who confirmed his attendance, explained that the religious leaders visited a politician to table their grievances with northern governments. He said, it is a smear campaign. Yes, I attended the meeting and wrote a short report of it. I am surprised that the only thing they read there is the transport money. I said I collected. Let me send you the report I made. In the report, it titled, The Northern Pentecostal Bishops Meeting with Bola Metinumbu Biang Observed. He said it is true that the Northern Pentecostal Bishops under the leadership of Archbishop John Praise Daniel, who is the National Vice President of Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria and Chairman of Northern Pentecostal Bishops, called for the meeting in Abuja. The meeting was enlarged to include all, polit all Pentecostal Archbishops, Bishops and Apostles from the North, with about 100 people in attendance. He said one of the organizers, Bishop Jonas, Katung invited him, explaining that a Katung held that the church in Nigeria most times plays the politics of exclusion, often with grievous consequences when the outcomes manifest. The embattled cleric went on. He, Katung, said there is nothing wrong in interfacing with all political aspirants and candidates, even with the ones we do not share in their manifestos or those we think are not likely to win. To hear what they have to offer and have the opportunity to express our fears and challenges if they eventually win the elections. This made much sense to me and I decided to attend the meeting. And I thank God I did. Bola Betinubu personally came to the meeting without much fanfare. For almost an hour, it took time to try and convince us that in all his political, public and private life, he had never been a religious bigot who discriminated against Christians and gave several examples to buttress this. He, Tinubu, explained also that he didn't even choose Senator Shetima Kashim as his deputy to spite or despise Christians in the North, but only as a political strategy to win the election. He therefore pleaded that conscious efforts must be made by all concerned to try and play down the role of religion in politics and governors in Nigeria. After the speech, I was one of the three attendees who were permitted to respond by way of comments and questions. I appreciated the points he had made, but made him realize that the situation in the North was quite different from what obtained in the South. I told him that Christians in the North were not happy with his choice of another Muslim from the North to deputize for him for good reasons. I explained that in the north, there is a deliberate agenda to marginalize Christians from the public square and to annihilate Christianity in due course, if possible. I said there are at least eight states with a majority Christian population and a few others more which are roughly equal in population between the two faiths, but these are our experiences. In these governments, there are more than 30 ministers in the federal executive council from the north and abuja but we have only two christians who are ministers among them christians find it hard to acquire land documents to build churches or even to renew the ones that have expired christians are not allowed to preach their faith in government-owned media houses in some states the teaching of christian religious studies crs and or bible knowledge bk has been banned in public schools in many states including Bruno, in which the ban was done by the man he had chosen to deputize him, deputize for him. Oh, Coco, you can imagine. Hmm. Bian continue. Christian students are denied administration, admission into public universities and other tertiary institutions, and a few admitted are denied their choice of some.
professional courses like medicine, engineering, law, accounting, which are needed for Nigeria's development. I had to stop because of time constraints. I then asked him that if by any means we supported him and we, he wins the election, how would he redress, redress these challenges? The applause I got after my question showed that I spoke the mind of almost everybody in the hall. The two other speakers also raised issues about what he had for us as Christians in the North if he wins. In his reply, he appreciated the issues raised. Obviously, some of them were eye-openers to him, but he said for political exigencies, he wouldn't divulge what he planned doing. Hmm. You don't want to divulge it. So when you when you when you really finish, you want to say you know talk like this. Mm -hmm. Well, he planned. Okay, but say uh, he had heard them and would surely act on them if elected. He said all oh, he wants the Christian community from the north to do was to identify capable men and women with integrity to present the present to him for engagement in his government if he becomes president. In closing, the convener thanked Bola Metinubu for coming and the comments he had made and told him to consult widely among Christian leaders in the north who are still grieving for what they perceive as rejection and despising Christians in the north, among whom he did not find anyone capable to deputize for him. He also asked him to ensure he recovered occupied Christian lands and communities violently taken over and occupied by terrorists if he becomes president in 2023. At the end, breakfast was served with some campaign souvenirs like towers, tea mugs, notebooks, and some transport money to all attendants. It must be emphasized that Archbishop John Praise Dane and Bishop Katung the conveners of the meeting made sure that Bella Mentinubu did not leave the meeting thinking that uh, the Northern Pentecostal bishops had endorsed his candidacy for the office but wished him the best of luck. Thanks for your time, Reverend Biang told the Guardian that the above was, was what he wrote on the WhatsApp group, stating, but you can see that the main thing I said was never reported. Only that he gave us money. <laughs> the truth is that I don't even know how much Tinubu gave John Praise. And I don't know how much each person got. But the transport fare I got could hardly bring me back to Joss and fix my car due to the badness of the road to Abuja. The error of judgment I mentioned was to explain to my people how indeed I shouldn't have accepted to attend the meeting. If doing so would be misinterpreted as being done. But the Guardian had on Monday reported that PFN disowned the Pentecostal Bishops Forum of Northern Nigeria, which met with Tinubu on Friday in Abuja. The move followed the opera generated by the single faith ticket adopted by the ruling party for the poll, denouncing the clerics party on Sunday. Deputy National Secretary of PFN, Bishop David Bakari submitted that such a group does not exist within the fellowship. There is nothing in PFN that is region-based, like Southern or Northern Pentecostal bishops. The PFN was not part of the meeting with the presidential candidate that was highly politicized. We are, however, aware of the ripples in the public domain about this matter. I am speaking officially to clarify the PFN has nothing to do with that he had asserted. Hey, my goodness. <laughs> oh, oh, God, you. Hmm. Oh, what do you say? Oh, this small something. Oh, the man said all oh, that he said, all the explanation left, right, and center. Do this even bother the people that the town transfer away, if you're waiting, collect. <laughs> that be the problem. You see, the problems that said Tinubu is creating, he thinks he's smart. The problem is creating. You know that it's going, it's going to bring problem, because if you guys, if you are if you are not dividing the country the more, see you ought, you guys ought to have been talking about something different from a fake bishop or whatever. If you know that the Christians, you know it doesn't matter. And now from what the man explained, he said, you know what that uh, Tinubu just took a uh, 
Shetty man to be his deputy because of a of how just to win because the it is the population is talking about. So this issue of a competence and what have you forget that's a BS. Forget the BS. Mm -mm. That, that's not that's what not what the, the re, that's not the, the reason because we have competent people all over the place. See, like the man said that what is obtainable in the south is different from what is obtainable in the north, and that's why they are taking it. Most of the time, the people from the southern part of the country try to cry more than they believed but they don't even know the extent it's like when you have beaten a child to the extent that the child can, cannot cry you know you just be looking the child will just be looking even when you are when the child is supposed to defend himself or herself i think that's the, the way most of the time the southerners are really looking at the northerners you know they say oh it's like they are not being paid they are not whatever if you know what those guys are those guys are going through it no be small thing so the question i i, I was even concerned because me now, of course, what people are talking about is the money collected. But if you, the man raised some important issues, which I know Tinubu himself might not know. He might not know. But will he be able, even, let's say, paraventure he wins, will he be able to correct all of that? Will he be able, even to the extent that uh, even what uh, Shetima even did, even in, those, in, in his own state? You know, people are not just talking for the talking sake. They know exactly what they are talking about. Will Tinubu be able to stand his ground to say, no, this is what these people have been going through? All of this nonsense, and they will tell you, well, when we get there, we are going to arrange meeting for where it will end there. Even if they arrange meeting, they will not be able to do anything. We can see we have been deceived for so long. You shouldn't be falling for all these uh, traps, but the man should go and settle himself and know how much he collects, how much he did not collect. Well, bribe to me is when it influences you to act against God, conscience and law after collecting it you know it is not a lesson for everybody you know the kind of person you are collecting money from believe you me if he had gone why we in the first place if the needful uh, had been done i don't think there would be need for all this meeting or whatever going back and forth and what have you whether they are using it as a strategy that is their own cup of tea the question is that if he had gone to me to be he go drop shishi, he go collect shishi. Why will he be collecting? Because you know that this person has some kind of baggages. When it comes to bribery, you know, now give it to them. You, we, we should not be shy away, shy, we shouldn't shy away from that. Like the Bible says that wisdom is profitable to, to the rest. Princess of any, I just will call for me. See, what are you collecting for? You know, you no know, matter what. Uh, if you are telling us that uh, it will not influence to act in a negative way, but see what it has caused. It may be bright, but I think it becomes a problem when allowed to influence you against the armless. Getting slots for Christian Senate presidents and House Speaker will be more reasonable for Christians in this game. Well, very intelligent reply to Tinubu. Some of the issues you raise are not known by Christians in the South. Exactly. E.g. depriving or disallowing Christian, uh, Christian children from studying certain courses. Our eyes are opening wider. It's not wrong, go. I know what I saw when I was serving in the north. Christians in the north are really suffering. Hmm. Oh my god, somebody saying Igbo people are propagandists. Okay, Igbo people, your enemies, even when nothing concerns them, your ethnic by God must find a way to drag them into the matter. You are just pathetic. Thank God Almighty for your remorseful. Go and see no more. And they are building mosques in my desert state so can you imagine why did they go in the first place when they really know that christians in general are grieving over the insult shetima banned brk in bono who said tinubu is not aware of the of this and other atrocities against christians in some parts of the north the attendees are a rebellious christian group god will judge them so guys let's hear your opinion and have your take on this my goodness